SaaS customers who have multiple deployments of SaaS software and at least one deployment of SaaS visual analytics will likely have a requirement to load data to their laser server in the visual analytics environment from their other environments. If you have encountered a scenario where you need to load data from a SaaS environment to a remote laser server, stick around and watch this video to see how the SaaS laser analytics server access tools may help you with this process. I'm Mark Thomas with SAS, and this is the Technical Insights and Expertise Series. Here are the areas we will cover in this video. We will look at what these tools consist of, when or why we would use them, how to determine if they are already installed, if they're not installed, how do I install them, we'll assess if they re require configuration, we'll evaluate any considerations with using them, and finally, we will look at an example of using them. You may have never heard of the SAS Laser Analytics Server Access tools, but chances are you'll recognize some of the components. So what are they? In essence, these tools are SAS engines deployed on the compute tier of a non-laser environment that enable the user to load data remotely to a laser server or Hadoop file system. The included engines are the SAS IOLA engine, used to load data to a laser server, and the SAS HDAT engine, used to load data to the Hadoop file system. Here we have an example of a lab name statement used to access a remote laser server on host sasserver01.sas.com and port 10010. These tools were first shipped back in early August 2014 and were included with a limited number of solutions. Their initial purpose was to provide a mechanism to load data into the laser servers associated with SAS Visual Analytic Administration and Reporting, a product also known as VAR. Beginning mid-July of this year, 2015, the tools are now automatically included with SAS integration technologies, which is a core part of SAS solutions. Finally, the engines work only when the laser server on the target environment is deployed on Linux. You may be wondering why or when you would use these tools. As you saw in the last slide, they are used to load data from one SAS environment to a laser server in a SAS visual analytics environment. If you have an existing process to load tables to your laser server, these tools may help you streamline this process by reducing the number of steps involved. Let's take a look at a typical scenario. In this example, a customer has an existing enterprise business intelligence environment. This is considered the source environment. The customer then added SAS Visual Analytics in a second environment, and they needed to load data from their EBI environment to the laser server on the VA environment, known as the target environment. A common way to do this is to write data to a local SAS data set in the EBI environment, transfer the data to the VA environment, and then run a batch process such as autoload or use visual analytics administrator capabilities to load the data to laser. The transfer that we see here can be avoided by writing the data set to a shared file system or an NFS mounted file system. As you can see, this is a multi-step process that requires some planning and coordination. In contrast, when using the SAS laser analytic access tools, the intermediary steps are removed. The workspace server on the EBI environment is adjusted to use a SAS IOLA engine, and the data is written directly to the laser server in the VA environment. As a result, there is no need to run a process on the target environment. Now that you've seen how these tools may benefit you, you may be asking how you can determine if you have them installed on your source environment. The process is pretty simple. First, generate the deployment registry report using the command below. The jar file can be found in the deployment registry directory of SAS Home. This will generate a text file and an HTML file. Second, open the report using either a text editor for the text file or a browser for the HTML file. In this example, we open the HTML file. Third, search for access tools. 
You should find two components indicated by product codes Laser ENG and TK Laser ENG. Then search for TK Secure SSH. Combined, these are the three components that make up the Laser Server access tools. If you find them, you already have them installed. If the tools are not installed, installing the tools is pretty straightforward. If you have a new SAS solution deployment, as long as it contains SAS integration technologies at SAS 9.4 Maintenance Level 3, then the tools are installed on the compute tier. The screenshot here from the deployment registry report generated on the previous slide indicates that this deployment is already at the current maintenance level. If you have an existing deployment of a SAS solution that precedes the SAS 9.4 Maintenance Level 3, then upgrading to that maintenance level will install the tools. Please note that it is not possible to install these tools by themselves. As you are probably aware, most SAS deployments require two steps, installation and configuration. The SAS Laser Analytic Access tools require no configuration using the SAS deployment wizard. However, there are prerequisites to using them. The SAS tools communicate with the target environment using SSH, and therefore SSH keys must be created and distributed for the account used to initiate the load of data in the source environment and the account used for loading data in the target environment. The source environment must have the private key. The location for the key is shown here for supported platforms. On Windows, it is necessary to create the .ssh directory using the make directory command as Windows Explorer will not allow it. In the target environment, which is Linux only, the public key must be stored in the authorized key file for the account authorized to load data. If the laser server is distributed, then the private key must also be available on the root node to communicate with other nodes in the cluster. There are several considerations for the SAS laser analytic server access tools that you want to keep in mind. First, source environments are not limited to Linux and Windows. It is also possible to use these tools on Solaris and AIX. However, the target environment must be Linux only. The laser server may be distributed or non-distributed. Keep in mind that the network bandwidth between the environments may limit your throughput. Therefore, it is recommended that you start with smaller data sets and monitor throughput to ensure acceptable load times. As we noted in the last slide, appropriate SSH keys must be established on the source and target environments. You can test manually before attempting to load a data set. The engines included with the tools do not register data sets in metadata. This will have to be done manually. However, if a data set is already registered, it is possible to load the table and then immediately use it. These engines do not permit you to manage laser servers remotely. Although there are start server options for the SAS IOLA engine, these can only be used when the host parameter is pointing to the local machine. Now let's look at a brief example of usage by loading a SAS help dataset to a remote laser server. On the source environment, start the client of your choice. That may be the SAS Display Manager, SAS Studio, or some other server of your choice. If the compute tier of your source environment is running on Windows, it is necessary to set the TKSSH underscore user and TKSSH underscore identity environment variables so that the local session knows where to find the SSH keys. These environment variables must precede the lab name statement. Next, define a SAS library using the SAS IOLA engine and set the host parameter to the target host containing the running laser server and set the port parameter to the port number of the laser server. Then add the server tag associated with the remote laser library. Finally, add code to load a SAS help dataset to the remote laser server. In this example, we use proc copy, but we could have also used a SAS data step. Once this information has been entered, you can run the load job. If the associated laser server is started, the account used for loading has the appropriate SSH keys, 
the metadata account has the necessary roles and permissions, and there are no firewalls blocking the traffic, then the proc copy statement should load the data set to the laser server. Now let's walk through this exercise on two live systems. In this example, we have a customer intelligence 6.4 deployment that is considered our source system and a visual analytics 7.3 deployment with non-distributed laser that is considered our target system. These are two distinct deployments. On our source environment shown here, if we review the SSH keys for the laser administrator account, we will see that the private, public, and authorized keys are defined. If we switch to our target environment and look at the keys, we will see that only the authorized keys is defined. This is all that is needed to perform the load with regard to SSH. Next, let's make sure that the laser server is running on the target system. We look at the status and it is running. Next, we will look at the laser tables to see if the baseball table is loaded and the status shows that it is unloaded. Now, if we go back to our source system and bring up the code to load the table to the remote system and submit it, it completes without errors. And upon looking at the log, we see an indication that the laser table was loaded. If we return to our target system and refresh the status of the table, we now see that the baseball table is loaded. We have verified that the SAS laser analytic server access tools have successfully loaded the table to a remote laser server. For more information on SAS IOLA and SAS HDAT engine usage and related parameters, please see the link to the SAS Laser Analytics Server 2.7 reference guide below. Thank you and check back with your global enablement and learning team for more tips and tricks.